Hello and welcome to today's webinar on co-creating a culture of engagement and well-being. My name is Natalie Ravenscroft and I'm the well-being support manager for NAPA. If you are new to NAPA, we are the National Activity Providers Association and we are a national charity and a membership organisation. NAPA supports the care sector to prioritise well-being through the promotion of activity, arts and engagement. And NAPA provides support services that equips our members with the essential knowledge, skills and resources required to provide person-centred, meaningful connections. We are delighted to be supporting this webinar today in collaboration with My Home Life England. And my co-host for the day is Emma Hollaby. Um, Emma is the Senior Development Officer at My Home Life England. And for those of you that are new to My Home Life England, Emma is now going to tell you a little bit more. Hello, um, lovely to be here today. Um, so yeah, a little bit more about My Home Life England. Um, it's part of My Home Life, which is a broader organisation. So we have um, regional um, counterparts in Wales, Scotland, Northern Ireland, Germany and Australia. No work trip to Australia yet, but hopefully that's coming up soon. Um, so we're hosted by City University of London, and that reflects the way in which we do everything as part of a wider research base. So it's really important that we are evidencing the benefit of good support for care home leaders, so managers, deputies, lead nurses, um, in achieving better quality of life for everyone that encounters the life of a care setting. So people who live there, work there and visit the whole life of the, of the care setting um, can be improved by supporting managers really well. Um, so the way that we do this is by running leadership support and development programmes. So they are aimed at care home leaders and um, they happen regionally. So um, we'll work with say 15, 16 homes in, a, in an area and um, supported by a CCG or perhaps by a council. And um, Really, the programmes are quite long term. So we start with initial workshops and look at ways of using resources. And then that goes off into smaller action learning focus groups. So we, we're really about sort of bringing, bringing on real change in the time that we're working together. And we have additional modules on things like community engagement or technology um, and further continuing professional development as well. Um, on top of this, we also have a strong community engagement arm to what we do with our, our flagship programmes, Care Home Friends and Neighbours, um, or Care Home Fans. And that is um, kind of a body of resources and support and connections for um, building really good, strong community links. So um, working not just to get um, your local community to come into the care setting, but getting out and being part of that community as well. And we're also running a huge intergenerational project at the moment where we're linking school-aged children to older people's care settings across 11 different areas of the country. So it's, it's busy work, um, but that's us. <laughs> Very busy. And I, I like the um, intergenerational side of um, the project that you're working on at the moment. It sounds very exciting. So shall we introduce our guest? We're joined by three other people. Um, and I think we're gonna start with Blessing. Um, so, Blessen, would you like to introduce yourself to the audience, please? Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Blessen Thomas. I'm a registered nurse manager, and I work for the Heights Nursing Home, which is a part of Fremantle Trust, a charitable organization. Um, uh, I have been in this role uh, for over eight years, and I have worked for this trust for 12 years. And, um, and I'm glad to be here today to share my working relationship with the activities coordinator who is Junior, uh, who is unfortunately not able to attend today. And um, Junior does send his apologies. And um, uh, me and Junior have been working together for over five years. And um, Junior currently is a prominent member of our staff team here at the Heights. Thank you. I like that, a family member of the staffing team. That's lovely. So thank you very much for that blessing. Shereen, um, would you like to introduce you and Tracy, please? I'm Shireen Johnson, um, and this is my um, general manager, Tracy Haddock. Um, we both work at the Marlbrook Centre, which is in St Neots. It's um, a level two rehabilitation and neurological centre. Um, it's got three different floors. Um, so the, the ground floor is for rehabilitation. 
and then it's neurological on the first floor and then we have a dementia um, unit on the second floor um, so it's quite a lot of different um, complex needs and different types of residents and stuff like that I've worked here for 15 months um, yeah so that's it <laughs> Tracy, do you want to just introduce yourself, please? Hello, everybody. I'm Tracy Haddock, and I'm the general manager here at Mark Rockland. Um, Shireen has just um, uh, spoken, uh, introduced me, shall I say. Um, yeah, we've worked together for the last sort of 15, 16 months here at Marbrook. Um, our client group are very complex. And um, we are a nursing home uh, as well as a re rehabilitation service. So we provide a lot of, um, you know, a, a lot of different services throughout the building. Ah, well, thank you very much for both of you introducing who you are and um, your services that you, you support. So both the National, um, Na National Activity Providers Association, so NAPA, and, and my home life England um, have the privilege of connecting um, with people living and working in a wide range of care settings on a daily basis. Really seeing firsthand the work that goes into fostering care and connected communities. As the two organisations, we frequently collaborate together. Me and Emma have, have worked on projects uh, previously. Um, and it became clear that where My Home Life England are supporting care leaders and NAPA are supporting activity providers, we have the same vision for building positive, supportive working relationships. Um, and in order to achieve a better quality of life for those who live in, in care services, use care services, work, visit, um, or just interact in general. So we wanted to help um, colleagues work well together by building on what works well now and finding new ways um, to work towards shared goals. Um, we began um, a consultation um, back, I think around about February, where we ran two webinars, um, inviting both activity providers and care home leaders to attend. Um, and we was asking what was already working well in terms of their professional relationship. Um, Emma is now going to tell us a little bit more about um, the backstory of this project and um, where we've got up to so far. Yeah, thanks, Nat. So as you've mentioned, we started with um, a couple of webinars and they were both run in the same format, just run at different times to enable more people to join. And we invited activity leads and care home managers um, really to find out what was already working well. So where to start um, and what, to, what could be built on, basically. And um, it's really interesting having that time to, to chat to people and starting off on that positive note, because what was really clear is that the vision for what people want from their, um, for their care setting and for the people that live there is, is very aligned. Um, but the, there are things we can do around the process for getting there. Um, so two really interesting points came out of those webinars. The first one was really about understanding each other's roles. Um, so they, the roles themselves vary widely across different care settings anyway. You know, we all understand that what one activity lead looks like in, a, in one place be totally different where there's different needs and expectations and working hours. And, you know, it's quite a complex thing to sort of write one typical role for that kind of programme because... You know, if it's working really well, it's resident led, so it's going to be fairly unique anyway. Um, but working both ways as in the activity leads understanding of their manager's role and vice versa. There, there are common misconceptions or, or things that have perhaps used to be the case and aren't so much how we work now that, that came out from the webinars as, as being kind of points where people were getting stuck and that, that so understanding, really understanding what people's roles are and um, what they're doing, you know, what they're achieving every day um, was, was really passionately felt and was quite important. So we knew that was one area that we wanted to look at. And the other area is a kind of a shared vision, but one that applies to everyone that works across that care setting. So there was, there's a sense that it kind of falls to 
the activity lead to to do the to do the work and the manager to support it but actually they're kind of driving it and it's a it's a wider home thing so a whole home culture towards sort of um, really positive engagement and activities is achieved by that those two roles really working together and having a good idea of what what success will look like at the end of it all um, so part of that is activity leads being given that sort of trust and authority to get others including people in the wider community involved and the other side of that is managers modeling it from the top that there's an expectation on everyone in that care setting to be a part of community engagement and activities and sending that message out that it's important and it should be prioritised and it's a professional thing. Um, so central to all of that happening, the message that was fed back to us from, from people that took part in the webinars was that um, regular conversations are needed um, and it's that constant keeping in touch and checking back in on sort of whether you agree on how to get there that really is the basis of a, of a good working relationship. So the webinars were brilliant for backing up what both NAPA and My Home Life England see in their everyday work and hear from managers and activity leads all the time as to sort of how, how you can build that, that strong working relationship. You know, what's, what's at the basis of it um, before you get into the realms of, you know, big sky thinking what you want to achieve. So um, that was really sort of fed back to us. And just to finish up on that, um, we also asked what the format of it should be. Um, so it, we took a poll and people voted for a written toolkit which had interactive elements, so stuff that you could do together, and some sort of video content, <laughs> which is what we're working on now. So um, they really wanted to, to see real life examples of this happening, you know, a real relationship between activity leads and managers. Um, so that's kind of how we've got to where we are now um, recording this webinar. Thank you for that, Emma. I think you summed that up really well. Um, you know, and we're delighted that um, Tracy and Shireen and bless them um, can join us today. Um, you know, that, that key to positive working relationships um, does lead to better engagement um, and this whole home culture. Um, and it means everyone's involved every single day. And as you said, coming right from the top with the, with the um, care leaders, um, with that support given to the activity providers who then can action that and take responsibility and um, it's you know that connection there it, rather than it being one individual that's responsible it's kind of conducting almost um and, and you know giving that individual that support um to go out there and and make sure that well-being is essential and is being promoted and you know having that positive culture and uh, supporting the idea that engagement is part of a positive environment um, and that's the reason that we've we've got Blessing and Tracy and Shireen here with myself and Emma today is because during that co-creation of this um, you know use us they asked for real life examples um, and we wanted to give that so let's let's ask some questions and that have basically been put to us as well We've been asked these questions to, to ask yourselves from, from working groups or uh, from past conversations with the support line or me and Emma have been working on projects. So Emma, do you want to start with the first question? Yep, I'll kick things off. So um, bless on, this is a question for you. Um, so it's, it's around looking at the roles of each of you. And I'd like to know, um, why do you feel it's important to understand each other's working role? So you understanding Junior's role and Junior understanding your role. Uh, thank you, Emma. Uh, I think so. It's very vital to understand uh, each other's role so that you have a mutual understanding of what each other do. Um, the, the homes in which I feel that when care managers value the role of an activities coordinator, I think so there is a better positive culture in those homes. Um, I do understand both of both the home manager as well as the activities coordinator have got busy roles. Um, both can be extremely busy, um, but there should be a time there we understand each other's role very well. Um, there should be, um, you know, as previously mentioned, there should be a way that there's regular conversations that takes place where feedbacks are given. Um, it's a responsibility of manager to make sure that supervisions are done, positive feedbacks are being given, um, appraisals are done, and also targets are also set for where what can be achieved. The care home manager 
um, has got a significant uh, role in making sure that there is sufficient amount of budget that has been allocated for the activities coordinators as well, for the, what they do as well. Um, in our care home, um, what I do is that every month I have got something called as a manager's activity where I get involved with the activity myself and do some sort of activity with our residents. And so when I do that, I, it gives, a, gives around a positive message among the staff members saying that, yes, the care home managers value activities. So we should be also valuing the same thing of how important it is in the lives of the residents. So we very closely work with that. So if there's any kind of activities, it's also giving me 10 minutes to go and sit with the residents and see how the activity goes, seeing what the uh, activities coordinators do, understanding what their, um, you know, what their specific skills are, giving them the positive appreciation, and they will go the extra, extra mile. Um, I have seen that all this also adds into the positive home culture. You know, you can build up a positive culture when you have mutual understanding among each other's role. Um, it is it uh, brings about a positive culture, enhances residents' well-being, and also promotes quality care in the care home as well. Um, I will also want to say one, one aspect is uh, we have a lot of residents who have got wishes, dreams they want to achieve. And when we work together, I believe that it will help the staff members take the positive risks so that these wishes and dreams for residents could be also being achieved as well. So uh, to say in a nutshell, uh, I feel care home uh, coordinate, activities coordinators and care homes are the heartbeat of the care home. Uh, they are the bus. And uh, together, if you really work together, you can achieve great things, uh, which will really promote positive culture within the care home. So it's vital that we understand each other's role. I love that. I great. love that. Yeah, I love that. Listen, I mean, we obviously, we met myself and Emma, um, and for those watching, uh, we, we've worked with Blessing before, yeah. but you know, again, every time I hear you speak and you talk about the fact that you're getting get involved in activities, I think, and also, you know, June, you understand your role. I think that, and what we found through the workshop, Emma, was that sharing, you know, as, as we've said before, when we've done training together, Emma, it's not that sometimes that your home manager or your care leader doesn't want to hear what, what you're up to, but maybe at that moment in time, there's an incident happening. They might have an inquiry going through. They might be dealing with a staffing rotor issue. There could be a, a whole load of things going on that at that moment in time, they want to hear your idea or they want to get involved in what you're doing, but they've also got pressures. And similarly with the APs, you know, they, they need, um, the activity providers need to have that guidance and support and having that regular meeting, that conversation you know, as you were just saying, I'm sure we'll hear from Tracy and Shireen in a minute, but having them regular conversations um, is vital because the, the activity provider has to have guidance. You know, in some cases, they've had no skill set training in speaking and reaching out to the community or how to um, uh, manage um, entertainers and budgets. And, you know, it's, it's a really complex kind of role. And quite often it can be perceived as we're just, you know, AP activity providers are just planning a party or a, a, a game of bingo or a, a games afternoon. When in reality, it's a lot more in depth as evaluation to take part. Um, so I really enjoy the fact that, thank you for sharing. Um, and, and what is it exactly, Blessen? I do know, but for the audience watching, what is it you, you join in with? Um, I do... Uh, I love arts and crafts, so I do a lot of painting sessions with our residents. So we join, um, you know, if the residents, um, if I go with a blank canvas and the residents might tell me that they want to um, paint a seaside, they might talk about a holiday they have been in and so on. So we just do it in front of them. We get the residents to do a background if they are willing to do it, and then I work on the top of it. And our paintings then are being auctioned. We take part in the local arts club. Uh, art exhibitions and so on. So that's how we promote arts among residents as well. They get very thrilled about it. And uh, we had proper options here as well, where people could even bid online, bid through telephones and so on. And Junior was very, um, you know, uh, played a very integral part in making sure that our auctions were done properly. And um, and something just to add something to it naturally as well, is um, in our daily meetings, we have something called as a daily flash meetings. Um, uh, activities coordinators or providers are also part of those meetings so they exactly know what is happening throughout the whole day and they yeah. understand what the manager up to on the day and we also know what they are also 
planning for the day. If they need further support, if they're doing a massive activity where they need extra support. So it helps us even to understand, you know, having that day, every day that meetings also helps us. Yeah, brilliant. And um, thank you again for sharing that. And if anyone's watching that's a care leader and thinks, oh gosh, I would just like love to get involved in painting. It sounds idyllic, you know, but I've got 60 billion jobs to do. I think for our own well-being, we know we're very focused around our own well-being at the moment. I think allowing yourself to maybe commit to an hour once a month where, you know, it's in your diary and you're, you're blocking that out and, and you're interacting um, with, with the individuals that you support. And that doesn't have to be as blessing, you know, with, a, with a, an easel and a canvas and painting. That could just be a tea and a chat. Um, or it can be as big as, as painting, or it can just be taking part, you know, sitting with your AP, your activity provider, and actually just sitting in a session and taking part, and then maybe taking that away and discussing that and, you know, having that conversation afterwards. Um, so thank you very much for sharing that lesson. Um, it, I would be interested to see if anyone watching this um, decides that they're going to join in with an activity and, and gives us feedback on that. Um, Emma, do you want to add anything before we go on to the next question? Or Tracy or Shereen, does anyone want to add anything to that? No? Okay, fantastic. Right. Next question. Um, I'm going to I'm going to ask Shereen and Tracy now, um, either or. What works well in your relationship? And I'm not making assumptions, but if you've ever had challenges, so it's a double question, what works well in your relationship? And if, if you've ever come across challenges, um, you know, how did you overcome that? I think um, we've got a good working relationship because for me personally, I think Tracy has a open door policy where I can come anytime and if there's any issues, you know, I can come and speak to her. Um, Tracy is very, very busy. She has a lot of things to run and there's always people in and out of her office. She doesn't have a minute to blink. Um, so the fact that she's always welcomes me into her office and sort of lets me just waffle on about something, which is quite often, to be fair, um, you know, is, is great. It, it, because it's just me. I'm the only activity provider. I've got nobody to bounce any ideas off. Um, and Tracy, bless her, sometimes she's just a kind of look at me as I'm coming in, showing her a picture that I've made, or a poster or something. Um, but, you know, she'll give me the feedback that I need. Um, she's, because I've only been in the job for 15 months, you know, to start with, my confidence was quite low. Um, and the fact that Tracy had a lot of trust in my ability to be able to deliver the activities um, in the way that I wanted to, in a person-centred way, um, gave me the confidence and enabled me to be able to trust in myself. Um, we also try and have weekly meetings, the catch-up meetings about what's going on in the week and um, sort of what's happening generally across the board. Um, so that's very helpful as well. Um, and just like, just communication and support really from Tracy is invaluable because I've worked in places before where you know, the manager had no time whatsoever and, and really didn't put anything into the staff or anything like that, which, again, took away, takes away a lot of confidence when you've got no one to talk to, no one to turn to. Um, this was a new role that I came into. You know, there was no one before me, so I had nothing, to put, no sort of blueprint, if you want to say. Um, so, you know, I, I, I say to Tracy quite often, you know, Thank you for being there and supporting me through it because, to be honest, I probably wouldn't have got through it. I was a bit of a wreck at times. Um, so yeah, you know that it has been it has been a great journey, and I and I've grown such a lot um, through the support that Tracy's given me. And I think Tracy just thinks, oh, that's but that's my job. But it really has. I don't think she realises how much that. You know, a lot of managers just don't see it like that, you know, and it's not just your job. It's the, the fact that I've had that support there and it's it's helped me grow and stuff like that. So anyway, I'm waffling again. So I, I won't waffle anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but Tracy, have you got anything you'd like to add to that? Um, I think for me, it, it's um, it's very simple. Um, I'm, I am a very um, open 
um, person and I think it's about um, wanting the best for, for our residents and wanting to, you know, if Shireen is happy in her role, then our residents are going to uh, benefit. And, you know, Shireen is the only activity um, person we have here. So I, I felt it was really important that the whole team support her. Um, and that, that, I think, you know, has helped. Um, so it's not just me that, that wholly supports Shireen. The whole team do in a very indirect way. Um, I think that having um, trust in her ability and having the support from yourselves um, has helped as well. Um, I think that Shireen's background, being very person-centred anyway, in all of the jobs that she's done has helped. Um, the challenges, I think... I would say when when Shireen first came here, um, all of the 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 routines, if you like, in in terms of the the care staff, the nursing teams delivering care and and everything, Shireen all of a sudden came along and it was right. Well, I'm doing an activity with this person at this time, and I need them up at this, and and it was a change in their routine and their structure. And that was a challenge in the beginning. And, you know, Shireen was pulling her hair out at times, you know, she to have an activity planned and um, a resident wasn't ready or whatever, whatever the reason. And and I, I did support Shireen in, in terms of getting the staff to, um, I suppose, notice the importance of what Shireen was trying to do. And I think the staff, quickly realised yeah. the, the impact that Shireen had on the residents and how that made a difference to that resident's day. Mm -hmm. You know, just maybe just doing one simple activity, put a smile on their face. And that then, I think, helped the staff to think, you know, yeah, she's doing a good job. And then they sort of bought in to everything that we were doing. So it, what it, I don't think it was just me. I think it was a whole team effort. I, I really appreciate you being honest and providing that example of a challenge because, um, you know, quite often one of the questions we get asked via the, the support line service from activity providers here at Napa is how can we engage the care teams more um, to come away from being less task focused and, um, you know, having that individual led approach where, OK, you know, they can have the dinner in an hour if they want to. And they're, they're so engaged in what they're doing. Um, and also your open door policy. Um, again, I think well, the blessing might agree here as well that having that policy, having that approach, you know, Again, I've been a manager. I know you guys are doing 60 billion things and you've probably got another 40 in the back of the head that are on the bottom list, but are there waiting to be done. And someone knocks on the door and they're having a really bad moment or as Shireen says, she wants to show a poster or I know for you, Blesson Junior's coming along and he's got this fantastic idea and he's putting on a whole production, you know, and, and that enthusiasm and, and rightfully so, you guys are in an isolated role because you're the only care manager in the building. The AP is in an isolated role in some cases because they're the only activity provider in the building. And having that open door policy to be able to bounce them feelings, them emotions, happy, sad, frustrated, you know, at my wit's end, um, I need more, is, is an integral part of, of that relationship, of that connected, positive working bonding relationship almost. Emma, do you want to add anything onto that? Or? No, I, yeah, it just struck me that um, Tracy was talking about ways of supporting Shireen that are sort of indirect as well. So as much as that open door policy is there, it's also having a word with other staff members to say that Shireen's working really hard on this at the moment. Could you just make sure you're there for her? And that is sort of spreading that load. That's that's part of the whole home culture that we were talking about at the start, that sort of helping people to see why why it's for them to be involved in as well I think it's important that that, that is a top-down kind of thing but it 
also is is a quick sort of easy way of of helping that person to do their best work so yeah really interesting fab i have you got the, the next question yeah so it links quite well into the next question actually so bless on over to you um so the question is around what the, what the benefit is of of your good working relationship with junior um and your sort of understanding of each other on the wider home so we've kind of touched on this just now but what what the benefit is of that positive relationship on sort of well-being engagement across the rest of the the home um i think so we have been talking about it throughout our conversations today um but i would like to say that um it has actually brought in a lot more different ideas and helped us to improve upon what we were actually doing so just as we said um, we are the only home registered manager in this place, and there might be only one single activity coordinator or provider in the building. And we, uh, when um, we have got a busy schedule, you know, junior might come up and say that, listen, why don't we try this activity? Why don't we try this? Have you read this in the newspaper? Or why don't we achieve this for our resident? It's also giving him that value of the time and has helped us to go, um, you know, take extra miles for our resident, go the extra mile for resident. Uh, we identified that some of our staff members had a lot of talents in them. So we organized a lot of talent events like um, the Heights Got Talent Show, The Voice, and so on. So we did this talent show. So staff members from different diverse, um, you know, uh, you know, cultural backgrounds, different countries, they came forward and started displaying their own talents. And uh, we released DVDs after that. And um, we have got DVDs now around six or seven that we have already released. And when we play this, we can see about, oh, that is what we did. And we residents take a, you know, have a lot of fun on these days events when these kinds of talent shows have taken place. Um, and then we have seen that it also leads into residents-led activities as well, where Junior doesn't have to do all the activities. There might be a resident who's quite capable to do a quiz on himself. So then we empower our residents to do resident-led activities. Um, then there's something different. What we do here is about um, relative rent or a family member has got a talent and they have got something to share why don't we use their talents as well so recently we had a resident um, a daughter uh, who was from Poland and she said that let me come and bake some cakes and she baked some cakes, cakes along with the resident and she made some specific some very delicious salads she made for, with along with our residents and the residents all loved it freshly made bread and so on so that became a different activity that we could do so, uh, you know, he brings in ideas of how we can involve other people into activities. Something else we have is that we have got a lot of volunteers now. So different volunteers come with different skill set. So we might have a volunteer who's good in gardening. Fabulous. So gardening is something that they have got a taste about and they'll do gardening. We have somebody who does bocha. Bocha is a game that residents who are, who are confined to wheelchairs can play. It's like a carpet bowling game, but for residents who are based on wheelchairs who can't have got mobility issues. Then we have got volunteers who come to do singing. We have got volunteers who are local librarians and they come, they read stories to our residents and so on. The other positive benefit that we had is that we had improved our community links, um, the links in the local community. So we did community mapping, understood what are the different kinds of resources that are available in our community. So this includes like uh, arts club, music clubs. Then we had shops who came up promoting different things like care home, uh, churches, uh, schools, nurseries, and so on. So we have got a link with our local nurseries where the children regularly come here. So he was able to identify, the activities coordinators was able to identify what are the community links available so that we can tap into them as well so that it will all help in the benefit of the home and the resident as well. Something else that came out of the uh, joint working is hobby-based recruitment. Um, uh, sometimes, uh, you know, somebody might come into the care home, they have got no, uh, they don't have the right skill set or something, but they are very passionate and they have got a fantastic hobby. They might be a singer. Why don't we try, take this person on? So we have tried hobby-based recruitment and we have found that also very exciting. And, um, you know, uh, they take, might, might take some time to learn um, the job and everything. That's absolutely fine. But then we base them, we, we, we share their hobby, they like to sing. Okay, let's use their guitar skills. We have used resident staff members who are good in playing the instruments in end of life care. So residents who are in the final stages of their life. So this person specifically worked on projects on finding what are the music that particular person, residents like, and he created an album specific to a specific residents or going in and playing classical music for residents who are at the end stages of their life. 
um, and playing specific music for residents with dementia and so on. So this was another thing that we did. Now, being a nursing home with 90 beds, it's, a, it's quite a big home. Uh, we have residents who are confined to their rooms um, because of medical reasons, or it could be because of um, other conditions, health conditions, or their personal choice. Then we had a resident's family who said they don't want to come out of their rooms because they hate being in large crowds. So then we thought about, we have to focus on residents who are room bound or bed or based uh, bound to the chairs in the rooms or the bed. So we developed something called as bedside parties, which has been promoted in this trust. And that has been excellent as well. So what I'm trying to say is that through all this, when you're working together, you are able to identify where are your gaps that you know somebody is not able to access an activity or something that you're doing in the home and where can we provide better kind of services. Um, when we talk about the last one and a half to two years, we all went through this pandemic called COVID. Mental health among staff members had been a big issue that we all faced about. Um, but uh, activities coordinators could play a significant role in uplifting staff members' moods as well, not just residents, even staff members move, they come dressed in a specific clothes, costumes on certain days, and they come and say that, how are you guys doing? You know, they're not talking about paperwork to be completed. They are talking about uh, medical things. They're not talking about clinical stuff. They just want to say, how are you doing? Are you okay? Um, so what we did is that we have made them also a dignity champions so, and well-being champions. So they could even speak to staff members, sit down with lunch for somebody and say that, how are you doing today? It's something that I could help with and so on. And we could see a lot of help that they could provide in this. And we found the benefits of this across the home. And um, I'll, 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 I'll end now by just saying that, you know, they also have- to you, Blossom. Carry on. Um, it's like the um, activities coordinators, you know, uh, they are regularly attending all our residents' meetings as well as our relatives' meetings. We have got relatives' meetings taking place every month. Um, and um, they attend and they share about what kind of activities take place for the next month. You know, the families, uh, you know, they listen to my boring speech and talking about the developments in the home, the clinical aspects and all that they would listen, but they will be very enthusiastic. They'll be looking forward to hear from junior or from the other activities coordinators and seeing about what is next going to happen next month. Uh, okay, they might say, oh, that's interesting. Let's watch out for that. And that's what our residents and our families look forward to actually here. And finally, you know, we do something called as well-being scores as well. So we understand what the well-being score is. This is based on research. And we find that there might be residents who've got their well-being scores are low. Um, there might be some reasons to this. And um, so what actually these coordinators or providers do is that they go, they spend some time with the resident, go through my life, my stories, and they find out where actually we can do something with this resident so that their well-being can be uplifted. And they do this activity and then we do a post well-being score as well so we do a pre-score as well as a post-score to see if the well-being of the resident has been lifted and uh, we work on specific projects with specific residents um, on these kinds of things so we have helped our residents achieve um, their dreams where we had a resident who wanted to see her son fly an aircraft we had a resident who was an end-of-life care who wanted to travel to his own country that was in the Caribbean <laughs> islands we made that come true for the resident uh, we had a retired Navy officer who wanted, who had never dreamt about running an art exhibition because he had no children. We did it for him. Uh, we had a retired fire brigade officer who wanted to go back to his workplace. Um, uh, these are just few of the oh, things that yeah. we have been able to achieve. Our I, I think, you know, just just going back to what you said then about, um, you know, in hobby interviews. Absolutely love that. Again, you're talking about evaluation. So uh, working together, a care leader and an activity provider, you know, an activity provider might never have had to do an evaluation before. They might never have had to complete a risk assessment. Um, you know, they might not have them skills. But again, you identifying that within your position, um, you know, and being able to support that and drive that forward. And then also the, you know, fabulous, again, you know, people's aspirations and, and, and you know what they aspire and want to do and you're enabling that to happen again by supporting your activity provider junior um to to achieve that for the individuals I just think is beautiful Emma are we, I'm just going to ask the last question is that's okay we've just got one more question and this is open to everyone um so what is the bigger picture what what is the difference when a, a good working relationship 
actually works well? What difference does that make? There was any, go on, Shireen, yeah. Um, like I've mentioned before, having um, worked under a manager who had no time for me whatsoever, um, completely took away my confidence and, and everything that I'd worked for over 20 years. Um, working with somebody, um, and I say with rather than under, like I did with the manager, I was look, always looked down upon before because I was person-centred and because I believed in putting the residents first. Although um, Tracy is my manager and obviously she, I respect her as that and I look up to her, I always feel like I'm working alongside her and she doesn't look down on me. Um, so that enables me to be able to do my job in a confident way um, and I have trust in my manager. You know, I have trust in Tracy, whereas before I didn't have trust in my other manager. I didn't, I, I didn't take anything she said, you know, seriously, because I knew that actually she meant something else or, you know, it wasn't true. Everything Tracy said to me, um, I believe in, um, and I believe in myself because of the way that, that Tracy's been. So, yeah. I think that speaks volumes right there, doesn't it? In, in you know, again, what we're focusing on today is that positive working relationship um, be between two individuals. Um, Tracy, what difference does it make? Um, and I know you touched on it a bit before, but in general, what difference does it make to your care service, the fact that you two have a, a good working relationship? Um, I think that the residents benefit hugely um, because as you probably know um, you know residents will talk to people that they trust and um, Shireen is in a unique position where she has built a lot of trust in the relationship with our residents and if they if you know they, if they feel that they have a concern and they don't particularly want to raise it with um, the care staff. You know, people have got, they have raised things to Shireen and Shireen has come to me and then things have, have you know, been dealt with in a, in a way that they wanted it to be dealt with. Um, so I think it, it, it's, it's also about the relationships that Shireen has helped to build um, within the resident within the home so residents have made relationships um, together through terrain you know doing activities breakfast clubs you know lots of different things where she's actually matched people up because of their interests because where you know because she knows them so well so I think in a very indirect way me supporting Shireen to be able to do her job and me having the confidence that if something's not right, she can come to me and, and you know, we'll deal with it. Yeah. Um, had in an indirect way mm -hmm. and a very direct way helped the residents have a much better quality of life. Fantastic. Okay. Can I add something else? I think it's important also as well, because I have previous experience in care and, and different other things in, in the care sector, Tracy's allowed me to use my experience um, and, and put that into my job as an activities coordinator. Um, and Tracy hasn't, hasn't kind of pushed me into one category, yeah. um, and which has enabled me to bring out my confidence again. So I feel that I'm able to come to Tracy with any concerns that either I have or that the residents have or the residents' families have. And she's allowed me just to kind of run with it and, and be that person that they can come to. Um, whereas before, again, I don't mean to keep saying this, but I would never have been able to do that by previous manager. It would have been, I'd have been shushed and it wouldn't have been encouraged in any way. Um, so, you know, I think that that is just so important for all the managers that do listen and, and you know, activity providers that do listen. Please, you know, make sure that you and 
you're allowed to be like that or you enable your activity provider to be like that because sometimes residents don't want to speak to a nurse and they don't want to speak to a, a carer but they see us as friends yeah you no know, as their friends so they feel more comfortable opening up to us about things and that is that should be allowed you know because we're the, sometimes the only person that they have and that is right I mean the, again, you know, Tracy and I'm blessed and both recognise that with the activity providers and anyone watching. Um, we often find through the support line service here at Napa that it is the activity providers that will go and do your feedback forms or will go and find out, you know, if it's a research project going on and you've been asked a questionnaire or um, the, the husband, wife, brother, sister, aunt, and uncle want to know what their loved one's done today. And it will be normally the activity provider who can say, well, actually, um, dad took part in this session and he really enjoyed it and he said this and there was this magic moment you know they're, they're in and out around the whole home or the care setting they're, they're constantly in each different department and area they're talking to the, the um, kitchen teams they're talking to the housekeeping teams in front of house staff you know they're really uh, 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 an anchor sort of within your internal community just quickly bless them before we just wrap up with our top five tips so get thinking about that um what difference has it made to your job role, Blesson, having that working relationship with Junior? How has that helped you as a care manager? It's made my life so much easier. <laughs> it's, made, it's, uh, it's made my life fun. And, uh, you know, when um, you have a busy schedule, you've got 101 things to do. When an activity coordinator comes in, you know, it, it brightens up my day. And uh, when... Uh, uh, and that, and that's a you know in a nutshell that's how I feel when he comes in and um, and that's how our residents feel as well and uh, that's how I feel. Thank you so lastly um we're gonna ask um each and every one of you um to have five top tips that anyone that's watching today whether they're a care leader um, I mean, it doesn't have to be five. You can only think of three. That's absolutely great. But if, if if they're a care leader or if they're an activity provider watching this and they think, I need to speak to my AP or I need to speak to my, my care leader. Um, and, you know, I I want to have what Shireen and Tracy's got. And, you know, we can achieve that and build on that um, and, and help improve the well-being for the individuals we support. And similarly, with Blesson and, and Junior, um, how would they go about where where can they start or what would what advice would you give them watching today and i'll start with shereen okay um i would say never be too afraid to be as person-centered as you possibly can and um, to think outside the box um really listen to your um to your residents and to their families because um, you may be working with people who are non-verbal or able to, to do things. Um, read up um, as much as you can about the people that you support. Um, and just communication um, also, I think, is the key um, with all staff. Like you, you sort of touched on a little while ago with regards to us activity coordinators sort of being in the thick of it and talking to kitchen staff and, you know... Um, everybody really and I think that's important also building up a relationship with every part of the team and um, will make your job so much easier um, and you know if you find you're quite in heads with somebody explain why you're asking for these things you know sit down and have an actual conversation with with a person um, and don't be afraid to be honest about things and, and really sort of be open about what you want and what you need from them. Um, and just kind of be kind. Just be kind to people, you know. That's just one thing I think. So I know it may sound really silly, but just be kind to everybody. And know that, you know, people have bad days. You never know what's going on in someone else's life, um, whether it be myself or you know my manager or one of the kitchen staff or you know anybody you don't know what's going on in someone's life so just be kind and showing kindness I think helps just will help you because people will see you as that person and they'll be more willing to help you and do things with you and that's it really. Thank you Shireen that's absolutely brilliant. Tracy have you got any quick tips that you'd like to give to a care home manager? 
as, a, as a care home manager, I think my tips would be um, trust, have trust in your um, activity um, coordination, whatever their, their title is, um, have an open mind. Um, you know, Shireen has come to me with some ideas and I thought, wow, that, that, you know, <laughs> that's out there. But, you know what, if it works, let's give it a go. You know, be positive. Um, have time and give time. So make sure that you have, that you do give time to that person, even if it is only five or ten minutes in the day. You know, it might just be that they need to run an idea past you. So give them time. Listen. Um, I think, you know, it, it, quite often, they, you know, Shireen just needs somebody to listen, you know, because she might have had a difficult conversation with a resident or, you know, whatever, or she's struggling to come up with an idea about an activity. You know, listen and talk with truth. Um, and and just yeah, just be open and, and support. I think that that's it for me. Thank you. And bless them really quick because we're just about to end this webinar. We'll um, what what yeah. would you say to anyone watching today? Um, the first point is that be passionate. Passion should drive you. Uh, number two is support each other. Yeah. Number three, I said is that do your research. Don't stick to old practices. What is current? What is evidence based practice? Um, number four, as uh, Tracy and Shireen said, is trust each other and be kind. And the number fifth one is take positive risk, go the extra mile. Perfect. Fantastic. So thank you all so much for your time, experience and willingness to share approaches that already work in terms of, of your professional relationship. Um, Emma, I think we've got some other news just to share before we close um, this webinar. Yeah, so there is an accompanying resource, as we've discussed, with, that goes with this webinar, which will be available on both the My Home Life England and NAPA websites. So um, do check that out. It's got lots of tips for how to build a good relationship. Um, bearing in mind that those tips aren't necessarily based on, on things just working well from the start, like they're, they're activities in there which are a way of building that good relationship and you know, advice on how to start small and build this positive way of working. Um, so it's really worth checking that out and um, yeah and it can be found on both our websites definitely and and also to use if you're watching this webinar you took a step in in starting that um building relationships or improving what's already there we'd like to also thank on behalf of my home Life england um napa and emma and myself thank you so much for everyone that contributed to co-creating this fantastic toolkit um, and we hope you enjoy it. We'd love to hear um, your experience if you use it or you have a look at it or you've watched this webinar today. So should you need any more support or guidance, the NAPA support line is here Monday to Friday, 9 till 5 on 0800 158 5503 or you can email at support line at napa-activities.co.uk. The little minus we will be delighted to continue this conversation um, and, and offer support where we can. Um, and similarly, if you care leader watching, um, you can also ring the support line or you can head over to My Home Life um, and find out more information. So I think from all of us, um, thank you everyone for today. Uh, but for now, it's goodbye. <laughs>